So hello everyone, this is Juan Balmori here. I am with Victoria Yanotti and we are actually going to talk about three topics today. I want to talk a little bit about the REST Commission update. I also want to talk about support for shared folders in Exchange on-prem. And then finally, we're going to share some new feature that we are about to ship to beta uh, item multi-selects. So let's get started. So I want to talk first about the REST Commission, where we are. As you know, just to set up some context, hopefully, if you're an Outlook adding developer, Back in February, or, and even earlier, we, we've been sharing that, you know, the the, Re, the Outlook REST v2 endpoint is going to get decommissioned in November 30th this year. You know? uh, so uh, this is a big impact for Exchange Online and Exchange On-Prem and Hybrid. And if you're adding is using the REST APIs and the delegate scenarios using the REST APIs, it might get impacted, meaning it might not work. Well, it might be impacted in the long term. I would say. Just for reference, I'm including here some sample code that you can see on how, uh, you know, how you can, uh, so if you have a code that is going in the get callback token with the is rest true, uh, that means that you're getting a, a rest compatible token that you can actually use then to execute a few allowed rest operations. Basically, these are, this is the inventory of APIs impacted and the potential, imp, you know, what, what what's going to happen uh, at some point when this goes down, right? What, what I shared basically, well, these are basically all the APIs that are related to REST operations. Uh, what I shared last time is that, uh, you know, that we, we were able to grant exceptions. So the idea here is that we don't have a good replacement story for REST uh, using that. The idea, obviously, the idea, of course, in the first place is that folks instead use the graph API you know, instead of the REST uh, services. However, uh, it was not until we shipped our single sign-on capability that, you know, this is kind of a suitable replacement in terms of the experience that you can have because you don't have to pop any dialogues to the user and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, the idea here is that all add-ins that are using REST APIs before the decommission date are going to be granted an exception, you know, to keep using the REST API until 2019 goes out of mainline support of extended support, which is October 14, 2025. Uh, so that's the deal that we are working on and uh, that we are executing on. on that's a plan of record right now. So the idea then, the second idea is that add-ins that were created after that the commission date will not be able to use the REST service after November 2022. And I'm here adding a star and asterisk that is saying that this might change. No, so we are we are having a few discussions with uh, some of you actually uh, about you know some challenges that you guys are facing around moving to graph. So uh, there are I don't want to overpromise here, but there are a few discussions that uh, maybe we will allow all add-ins even after the commission date. But with that, but the, what's still going to be true is that after 2019, you know, it, it's going to go out. Uh, evidently, what, what I want to do is to buy some more time for you guys so that you can actually have, you know, move your add-in to, to, to use the Graph API, but you do it in a way that you don't lose, you know, that you don't pay in the experience, no? Um, basically, what we are doing right now is that we are collecting, the way that we are going to do this, or we are planning to, to, to identify those add-ins, is by getting the IDs. So we basically are working on trying to get the traffic, and try to identify, you know, that, you know, a REST call is coming from an add-in, uh, you know, to enforce this potential policy, you know? And that's why a few months ago, I actually shared a link here, uh, nkms.restcheck, that you can actually submit your add-in, your add-in IDs. You know, the ID that I'm talking about here is the add-in ID that is in the manifest. And I have seen a few of you sending it. To be honest, I, I was expecting more volume here but I, I haven't received uh, that much requests. I have approached some of some of you regarding this. Evidently, I, I'm planning to send an email to everybody, you know, just to make sure that you are aware that we received your uh, your ID. But if you have an add-in that is using the REST API, an Outlook add-in that is using the REST API, please go here and, and set it up so that we are aware of it. So that's where we are right now. I also want to share a few issues that I have seen from some of you have been reporting, you know, a few situations that are not ideal. Like, for example, uh, in some cases, the REST API is, is faster than the Graph API. <laughs> so, 
specifically on, on loading attachments. I think uh, some of you found that, you know, the, the Graph API is very, very slow compared to the REST API. The Graph API is aware of all these potential issues and they are working to, to make it better. They are, they are solving this, these problems as a P1. My goal about sharing these issues with you is that if you're experiencing similar conditions or if you're seeing that the performance is not the same, anything that it's kind of, you know, impacting the experience of your admin, please, please, please make sure to approach me. My email is here. Send me an email. I want to hear about it. And, and I want to work with the graph team in order to solve those issues, right? So if you have any issues with the graph, please let me know. The other thing here is that uh, in terms of capabilities or in terms of the API, I haven't heard so far so far any REST API that it doesn't have an equivalent in the graph. So functional wise, I think we should be, you know, we should be, we, we are actually so far, I haven't heard anything against that. So I think that functionality wise, I think we should be okay, but we could have performance issues and obviously that's also an issue because that impacts the experience of the add-in. So next one is authentication. So, you know, authentication, I and mean, David's going to talk a little bit about this more la later, uh, but we have found that our uh, the pattern that we are, you know, suggesting you guys to, to be following for authentication is to have like a middle, kind of a middle tier to be routing the graph calls, you know, and this evidently is also doing some performance issues. This you need to do if you're authenticating with SSO, as you will see later, that the performance is not great. The team is also working in, in improving this significantly, but we're expecting this to be available later in the year. So that is another factor that that is causing us to to think and about you know expanding a little bit the exceptions that we are going to grant. You know, uh, I think we need we need a bit more time. I haven't had the last word again here, but this is I mean we have problems like for example mobile. Uh, you have an add-in in mobile that is not supporting single uh, mobile today doesn't support single sign-on, so it will require to do a MSAL or an auth redirect flow to support uh, graph calls, uh, which is not, not an ideal experience, right? Compared to what you can do with REST. So bottom line, uh, so this is in track. We are getting requests. We're getting uh, issues from, from some of you. The call to action here is if you are experiencing anything that is preventing your adding to have a great experience, please, please contact us. We're here to help. I will pause a little bit because I, I, I see a few interesting questions, well, at least one interesting question uh, about the JavaScript API method of generating a graph API token uh, by Ryan. Ryan, yes, I, I have been, this is not that simple to do. It was our original goal to have an API like this. I think the auth team, our authentication PM is working very closely with the identity team. And we're going to have, they're working on a, on a new new way of authenticating and and uh, doing the authentication on the single sign-on in a way that it's more similar to what we have today, but we, you will still require to do that. You will still require to use that API to to do this. So we're we're not planning right now to to release something that can get you a graph compatible token, although it's on this, on discussions. I cannot guarantee that it's going to happen at this point. All right. So moving on. That was my first topic. Second topic is share folder. So many of you have been asking me about, you know, share folder support. Uh, share folders, by the way, is something so share folder support is something that we shipped uh, a couple of years ago, actually, or three years ago. Uh, but the problem is that it, it was only working in ex exchange online. It was not working in exchange on prem. So just for context, share folders is this ability that you can actually, uh, in the manifest, as you can see in this picture, you can add uh, support share folder flag to your to your add-ins. And basically what this means is that anyone who has an add-in installed and has access to either a share folder, uh, it meaning that it's a delegate, or someone delegated access to, to my calendar or to my inbox, you know, the add-in is going to be available. It's going to be kind of visible for that user. This is also true in preview right now for shared mailbox scenario. So this flag only enables the add-ins again in Exchange Online. But we have received a lot of feedback from you that it will be very good to have it also in on-prem. So basically, that's what we're doing. 
So this is in beta right now. If you install the latest beta and that is available, which is the build that you see in the screen right there, you will be able to enable shared folders in Exchange on prem right? So the call to action here is please go ahead, install it, try it in Exchange 2016, 2019 should work. And if you have any issue, if you see that this is not working as you expect, please go and open an issue here in our issues here. Now, obviously, you know, in 100% on-prem environments, we don't have the REST APIs available. So shared folders has, has the shared folder feature has some REST API support for getting, you know, the uh, information about the owner of that folder and making making calls on behalf of that user. So evidently that's not going to work because 100% on-prem doesn't have REST APIs. But if you're in a hybrid environment, meaning you have kind of a mixture of on-prem and cloud, uh, that should work. So let's check it out. And this is your feedback. Help us ship uh, something that is going to be useful for you, right? OK. Graph compatible term. There are a bunch of questions here for events and stuff. Uh, graph compatible tokens. I'm gonna I'm passing a little bit to see if there are any relevant questions here. Public folders are basically shared mailboxes folders. Ah, Gary is asking about shared mailboxes. Uh, shared mailboxes is supported right now in beta as well in Win32. Uh, that we are working also to support it in in OWA in Outlook Web Access and in yeah, Outlook for the Mac. Right now it's in preview. So this this beta program should also have support for shared mailboxes. Right. Uh, okay. Moving on. My last update here is around either multi-select. So basically, today, if you're adding Outlook add-ins, have you know affinity with just one item. They are providing uh, you know they they can activate and have associated with a single item. If you are selecting multiple items in the Explorer view, you know add-ins are suddenly disabled. Right. So uh, basically, what what's going to happen in in a, and this is not yet available, not even in beta, but I just want to give you some kind of uh, good news that this is coming, right? And but what I mean by this is that you know in the manifest, at some point in the future, you're going to be able to add a supports multi-select element as part of your action. So every adding command that shows up in the ribbon, for instance. Uh, you're going to be able to say, hey, this, this command supports item multi-select. And in order to explain you more detail how this is going to work, I invited uh, Victoria Yanori, who is, uh, who is actually the developer of this feature. She's doing a, her internship here at Microsoft with us, and she's working on, on this. So Victoria, if, if you want, you can actually share your screen and, and show us how this will work. Thank you, Juan. I'll just share my screen now. Yes, this will work. Thank you. I think you should be able to see. So I just want to start off by demonstrating the current behavior that we have. This is just a, a dummy mailbox that I have open up and uh, just populated with some emails. So currently, if I select one email, we can see on my upper ribbon, everything is enabled and I can perform all actions. If I go ahead and select two emails, the current behavior is what you just saw here with Viva Insights. So one email, it's enabled, two or more, it's disabled. However, this test added that I've uh, implemented here has this multi-select feature enabled. So in the manifest, like Juan just showed, at the action level, there is the elements for multi-select. And what we can do with this, I'm just going to show there's two main parts. One is the API, and the second is the event. So right now I have this add-in opened, and I'm going to go ahead and select multiple emails. So I'll select three, and I can actually retrieve their information. So what's coming back here is a collection of item ID, the subject, the item type. So item type is uh, here is a message, and there's also item mode because we are in read mode. So these are the four pieces of information that are being returned now, and later on this will be extended to offer even more functionality. And what we can also do is register for an event. There is a new event that's created, selection changed, and what this does let me just clear the screen. I'll register for this event. Whenever 
my multi selection changes, I get a selection changed event. So now we can keep track of when this happens. And there will also be a upper limit on uh, multi selection. So if you select too many emails, the add in will be disabled. And there's some exploration that would be done to see what is the, the best number and which will lead to um, a better performance. Juan, is there anything else you'd like me to show? Oh, I think, uh, thank you very much, Victoria. I think it's Thanks. very straightforward. I think in general, it's a very simple concept, you know, I, I, I to some degree, I, I'm, I'm sad that we weren't able to, to do it before for you guys, but now it's on the works, it's coming. And, you know, uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing in the future uh, around Ultimate Select is that we are, uh, so right now what we're, we did, the API that Victoria showed you, it's only giving you the ID of the items that are selected. Uh, so basically the idea is that once you have access to the IDs, then you can call services, a graph, for instance, and actually do additional operations on those items, like, for example, getting the attachments and, you know, uh, whatever operations you need to do. What we're planning to do in, in subsequent releases, so I think we're, right now we're doing that kind of the bare minimum that, that you guys need to enable multi-select, multi but in the future, we're going to provide richer API so that, for example, at the Office JS layer uh, level, you can actually use all the APIs that we have today for items and you don't have to call services in order to, you know, to interact with the, with the items that are currently selected. So this is also coming soon for Outlook on the web as well. So thank you very much, Victoria, for sharing sharing that demo. I hopefully people like it here. And again, eventually in one of these calls, I will, I will let you know that this is in beta. We're, we're shooting for end of summer, around September this year, later, you know, to have a beta program for this, and then you can actually play with it and give us your feedback as always. All right. And with that, I think that's what I wanted to cover for Outlook today, David. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Victoria. It was great to see all the new functionality and development and stuff coming out for folks. Uh, it's very cool to see.